Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Dave, actually your shirt this week is giving me like those like 70s men's vibes, like on the ice. It's very good, oh, very Terry. Polo from last summer that it's from a brand that like fits very well at the time. And then after a washing or two, it's like a little short. On the what are you going to do? So, yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> on okay. The grounds, so it's okay. This is this and that. We are going to discuss everything going on in the skating world this week. So if you're new here, please subscribe below and smash that like button. So Jonathan, you're back from Nashville. You just performed first performance in after quarantine. How crazy. Awesome. Oh, I mean, we were rehearsing in masks for the first week, you know, like inhaling it when you sang. It was like a total nightmare. And so the way they did it in, say it again. Singing in a mask? Really bad really bad. I, we we're all fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So like the performances were always going to be unmasked. It was a little heavy handed that protocol. <laughs> and aren't you kind of essentially in a bubble with every, I guess, yeah, what is- In some ways, but yeah, we still go to grocery stores or like whatever, but I mean, we had been tested and had our full vaccinations, but um, for the, uh, the actual performance, we were outdoors at this like Ascend Amphitheater for like 8,000 people. And it was like 90 degrees and humid and my hair was getting bigger and bigger. And they had jumbotrons, you know, where like you could see it. Like this is normally a rock venue. And, and then it you sweaters and spitters like Jonathan uh, Roth. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like just melting. Like I'm sweating through all of these opera costumes. It was a nightmare. <laughs> I'm a sweater, yeah. so nine degrees, yeah. that's intense. In like full costumes, like in like big suits and hats and like all this sort of stuff, you're like, ah, yeah. Needed to be a more linen-y sort of costume vibe, I think. Yes, and when, people are gonna be upset. Do you have like a, a vase with you? Like why are you- Oh, always. There's always one nearby, Dave. You can't just change the background on people with no warning. They got used to- This is one of my faves. <laughs> People want to just at the ready. You can hold it up. All right. This is yeah. Oh dear. We use it for like deer puns or like we can say I'm fond of someone's program. Like it's a fond. Right. Okay. I saw that Mr. Man visited you in Nashville. They're good for the support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he just did a big Juneteenth event today. Um, the Broadway League put on like a huge uh, musical theater event in Times Square. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, quite happening. Cool. You're flying tomorrow to do a click or what do you do? Yeah, so I'm teaching at the Chautauqua Institution for four weeks as their voice instructor there. Is so. that where you were last time where you were like in the dorm room when you were filming? No, that was at the University of British Columbia. Okay. <laughs> All well, the other side, other side, yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. I went to Michigan on Monday night. So how yeah. are you feeling? How is the ankle feeling, first of all? Ankle's okay. It's a little sore, but I did like programs every day this week and we're like how uh, is the costume feeling costume's fine practiced in it on monday and it was so funny because you know when there's a language barrier with the coach you mm -hmm. and you're like discussing like how many weeks until you compete and you tell them the date for like the here and they you know, galena thought that i was leaving this monday night and like i was oh, like, okay. at the end of my lesson and i was like well i'll see you thursday and she was like, but you're competing Wednesday. And I was like, no, I'm competing next Wednesday. It's tough, those things. Oh, good friend, good friend. Yeah. Good friend. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave, what were what was the important thing she taught you about competition? Oh my God. So we had a lot of important things about competition. You have to imagine there's shield around. She has like a whole theory about the warm-up. Okay. That we ran through several times this week, and then I practiced it again today with Igor. So, like, that was fine. But, okay. like, she has a whole thing, like, when everyone is doing, she has, like, a whole theory of what you want to do so that you're not, like, bumping into people on the warm up and, like, you know, smart just things. Logistics, yeah. Then she was like, dude, I want you to take a piece of lemon, squeeze it mouth. Get rid of lemon. Swallow, get rid of lemon. It's help oxygen go to brain. It'll jolt you. It'll I think like, it jolt you into being like, Yeah, amazing. Is the lemon going to help the oxygen go to my brain? I don't know, but I think it's going to jolt me. People can comment in the thing below. Listen, she says, I'm going to do it. You know what? She says, What's the worst that can happen? You ruin the enamel on your teeth. 
It's no biggie. <laughs> Does it hurt for a competition worth, worth it? <laughs> you know that her skaters are water spitters? Do you know this? No, what does that mean? Do you remember that time that Sasha Cohen did this? At, um, it was at like the, they showed like a close up of Sasha spitting water behind the boards at, it was either like the Campbells in the not 2005 before the 2006 Olympics. No. All right, so this is a technique that people do. First, you take a sip of water, and then the second, you take like a mouthful of water and then before you go out, and it's supposed to keep your mouth like wet so that you don't get nervous and have like dry mouth and feel like you're panting. Sometimes for singing, like I'll have to like chew my tongue a little bit to keep the saliva going because you can become super dry mouth. But actually, then I think like, what's the worst thing? Your dry mouth when you skate, not the end. Okay, okay. like <laughs> not doing it. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, watch. I'll wind up skating first, and then I'll be like, um, <laughs> "Okay." Okay. <laughs> Someone give me another lemon. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, we feel okay. Although, like yesterday, my cousin started talking about the competition. We were having like we were having dinner, and it started to like hit me in the stomach, and we're like, "Oh my god, oh my god," you know. But then you're like, "Okay, we're all right." Yeah, <laughs> it's good to have those feelings now to sort of, I think, yeah. Yeah, but no, we're excited. Mm -hmm. And but, what about this, Dave? What about this? Oh, yes, 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 yes. So we were talking about how her skaters all have very dramatic entrances. I noticed that Victor did, did a clap when he would skate for, before he would go out. Makes sense. Johnny did the, the this below the boards that Hanyu does. I think Hanyu like, was inspired by Johnny. Like, and then she was like, yes, but you need to cross yourself like Russian Orthodox. And she was like, you're really you Catholic. <laughs> and you have to use three fingers for like, uh, you know, Father and Holy Ghost. Yes. Amazing. Three times you have to do it. Okay. Oh my gosh. So much time. <laughs> so much time. You know, seeing Oksana there. You know, I mean, come on. We got to do and it. And Dave, here's what I recommend <clears throat> take an inhaler, shake it, say, it's not going to hold me, and then just throw it. Yeah. Just <laughs> Hilarious thing is that. I was talking to someone, you know, Jordan Childs, who's in the Olympic trials for gymnastics. Um, there are a bunch of articles. I don't know if I said this on this show or whatever, but there are a bunch of articles about how her, her female coach, who was Romanian, that they found her to be a less than enthusiastic presence. Some would find her to be a negative presence, right? She got- It happens in sports sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, banned from, uh, the ranch from the Caroli ranch for involving alcohol, uh, potentially allegedly involving driving, although maybe not like, you know, maybe alcohol induced practice or at the ranch or driving. Like there was a situation that was no bueno involving, you know, around athletes with alcohol. And that, that got banned from the ranch. But, you know, of course the doctor, not too much. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. Where does one draw the line? I guess but, alcohol. But, you know, this came out in documents that no, like we didn't know about Dr. Nasser. We really did try to you know, do the right thing at the ranch. You know, this was an art. That woman was present at the inhaler moment because she was Tanya Harding's choreographer. She was literally the one who tied the lace for Tanya. It looked like she was like ready for like an opera ski cocktail party. Tanya, Remember, she had like this beautiful I Nordic look. Like to like show this with the fluff iconic moment in sport that she was literally tying the lace but you know because you have like skating reporters who only cover skating and this one who only right. covers gymnastics people are not connecting the dots They're yeah like, and they need to they need to excuse me this yeah. is important okay <laughs> my friend aaron gillespie who skated with oh. diane rollinson and he also was like a gymnast as a kid so he knew erica from like the gymnastics and the skating aspect oh amazing okay and he was like five and on some sessions with Tanya, but doesn't remember, you know, that much because he was yeah. so young at the time. But okay. Anyway, it's like world, our favorite world collider. Literally. Oh, <laughs> I have an Olympic trials question. So I watched the awful show on Lifetime in 2016, and they covered people in different sports getting up for the Olympics. They covered Allie Raisman. They covered like a female boxer. There was a rhythmic gymnast. There was a swimmer, and there were two divers. They covered Steele Johnson, who had hit his head into the platform when he was younger as a teenager and had like 
cognitive issues, like memory issues from it. And then he also had, um, like he recently pulled out of the trial because he's had a broken foot that has not healed even with like multiple surgeries. So he withdrew at the last moment after they competed in the prelims and maybe the semis in uh, the uh, synchro with David Budaya. David Budaya, who was expected to be a huge star of the Olympics and finished third in the Olympic trials in diving and they did not pull a US figure skating and send him. Are they allowed to in diving? I mean, I, technically, I think they're allowed to in okay sport, but in any take, sport, okay. Diving, they take the top two. Wow. Oh, so, and you know, Ryan Lochte didn't make it either. So it's just so funny that people that NBC probably was ready to craft nightly coverage and personality. Yeah. They, they, you know, they frame this all out how they're going to, you know, from a storytelling perspective that they're not happy because NBC is different than a Eurosport that just goes to the event. NBC, right? The storytelling organization. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. right? so it'll be like Simone, Allison, Felix, Katie Ledecky, and I don't know, we'll see who, but there will be, I guess, new It's stuff. always fun when someone emerges. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, that's always a nice moment. For the new, like, I think one of the new stories would be Jordan Wendell, who's a great diver, who qualified uh, for the Olympics in platform. He was on that show and he had two gay deaths. And I was wondering, does anyone know, did the parents get divorced? Because obviously they were very open about the fact that, you know, the that one was part dad, of their story, yeah. His father adopted him, but his father got married. So then he was really raised by both men. And they were like both, I think they were like daddy and papa or dad and poppy or something, right? But where was poppy? Poppy was not at the Olympic trials. Do we know, did they get divorced? Poppy was not referenced. My mom didn't even know that the father was gay. She knew that there was, the guy, so Jordan is a Cambodian orphan who was uh, adopted and you know, raised and became a diver. But there were two dads and there was only one dad. And I guess the dad was sitting next to another relative or a family friend. My mom thought those were his parents. I'm like, no, 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 he had two kids. So it's just part of the story, but he'll definitely be a part of the coverage. So if anyone yeah. in the diving knows the skinny, why yeah. happened to Poppy? We need to know what happened to Poppy. Okay, I was ready for <laughs> oh, he's very handsome. What's happening? All right. Yeah, that's the name of your special. What happened to Poppy? What did happen to Poppy? All right, I don't know, but we got. But All we're right. gonna find out. Okay. So Jonathan, you've been in Nashville and like off the grid doing, you know, your life professionally. <laughs> what you make of the Aliona and TJ videos? Aliona Sevchenko and TJ Nyman. A week ago, when we would talk about TJ Nyman in every video, people go, "Who is TJ?" Who is TJ? I don't know who that is. Who are you talking about? And the Canadian friends, everyone knows about this guy now. Everyone is like gotten up to speed that there is a scandal. There is, um, we can confirm that there is a safe sport investigation going on involving um, figures at the monument rank. And that- um, Here's what I'll say, Dave. People say that opera is long, <laughs> but nothing is as long as that weird hug between TJ and, and Aliona in that video. I was like, I'm sure that this is some part of like some trust exercise, but this is so awkward. And then when even halfway through that hug, you see Delilah peace out. She's like, all right. I mean, it did not seem like an isolated incident. And then he kissed her. And you can see it's a mouth kiss, which is what it is. Do you think Vanessa and Eric are doing that? No. To build their connection is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. What made it worse was that Aliona's husband, who likes to post on Instagram, commented after immediately being upset then commented he had like the full range of emotions went through all the steps all in one comment okay <laughs> you know deleting comments posting things and throughout the week but said later that night that aliona's foot was hurting and that he was just comforting her. But so we did when you hurt your ankle at the rink day <laughs> And a lot of comments and Reddit threads and people were replying to him saying like, you poor boy.
But to me, it just threw so many things into question that are really not important at the end of the day. That's between- No, it's, it is all tawdry. And so, which is why you wish you would just like say something. At the end of the day, like that's not important, all right? Like the streets can talk, like whatever, right? Like people- Delilah seemed nonplussed, right? She, traffic cone uh, jacket right on by, right? Yeah. But then, you know, they're skating off the ice and like hands on the low back situation. I mean, we all saw it. There were other like lots of hugs after a lift. I mean, listen, there were videos there we didn't get a chance to record because Monument started blacking everything out. Because, mm, it, yeah. Mm, but it was not an isolated situation. But the big thing is that why would Aliona go into this situation? That's the big thing that I think everyone is really questioning. And I think until people saw it for what it was, they almost didn't believe it or it just seemed, you know, crazy. So, well, I, you know, you never should read all these comments, but I have been reading some of them as things were posted. And, you know, you, it really ranges the gamut. And it seems some people are like, oh, she wants to compete, let her. And I was like, I don't think anyone's saying that that's their issue. Their confusion is why this particular. Person. Yeah. So, so even, there's a 16 year old age difference. Which again, people are like, who cares? But again, the who cares comes in. We're, we're looking so short term, but yet we know the Olympics aren't an option. Like, well, the next Olympics may not be an option. Yeah. Unless, no, of course not. Yeah. Unless, would she try to marry him for citizenship? But even if she does, that doesn't get it that close, does she? She'd still have to get divorced first. She'd have to get divorced. Or she had to, I mean, it's all- That stuff takes time, yeah. Just about going to Worlds because she seems to want to go to the Olympics again, but she also seems to miss competition. I think it's clear that coaching is not her passion yet. And she's still in that athlete mindset. And what I noticed is I don't understand why this boy has been so chosen by Delilah and so elevated. Nina Mosher is calling him a copy of Maxim Trankov. If you watch that lift video, I noticed two things. He's not that physically strong compared to her other partners. He did not seem as strong as Robin or uh, Stanislav Morozov or uh, Bruno Masso. So I don't understand how the twist, remember he would like crouch down in his twist to make it look higher with right. partners. It was that. The lifts, he didn't seem that physically strong to just hold her up. She's doing a reverse lift, standard lift in pairs. TJ and Delilah were talking to her like she was wrong and the one that had to make all of the adjustments. As though she's never done this lift before. As though Aliona Sevchenko, and I noticed that they were talking down to her and it made, it was like a couple of things. It was like one, they're delusional. Two, the streets have talked for a long time about how Delilah treats women versus men. And you could see the favoring of TJ and like building up these guys and like fueling the ego. Oh, of course you're right. On what planet are they talking down in an instructional way to Aliona and not like, in a collaborative, we need to do this. Right. I, right. He was telling her, well, you need to do this so that I can move my foot. Like, he was just like very um, almost condescending, almost, right? And Delilah was like, we're going to teach you that. Mm -hmm. Or like supporting him in that situation. It was mind blowing. The live video is mind blowing. Like, psychologically, you're like, how long is this going to last for? Because she's, not like a shrieking violet. She has had a reputation for a long time as a fierce hair girl. Right. And a brilliant technician. How long do you think do you think that they're gonna make it? Like five years until they can compete in Olympics. Like TJ hasn't made it five months with his last several partners. So right. how long do you and does this tarnish her legacy? And what the heck? And right, this entire situation. So yeah. It's just uncomfortable, the whole thing. But I don't see him, like when they skate together, it's like watching a beginner with like an advanced, not a beginner, but like two very different levels, right? A right. beginner senior, I mean, for like with a 
international Olympic champion. Like they don't, their stroking doesn't match. He doesn't look as powerful as her in terms of the strength, the stroking, the skating, the lifts, the jumps. Like, Most people wouldn't, but like, it, it's just sort of, all things confusing. Again, I just always hope there's some sort of twist I don't understand, but you know, it seems to be what's happening. Maybe the twist is that she's experiencing what it's like to be an athlete who doesn't know how to move on. Like we've seen in documentaries, like Heart of Gold and is going through something. And yeah. in a period, yeah. and it was miscalculating, but what was mind blowing to me is when Chris Kinnearm left a comment about the length of that hug. <laughs> well, he has eyes. <laughs> he has a sense of time. What I got was how many combined enemies the three of them have that they have ticked off over the years. It was like a routine of pair skating around the world. Mm -hmm. Like, you could not even, uh, I mean, Tara Kane's like in comments about TJ's victims on Twitter. Tara Kane was liking that comment. Alexa, uh, Robin Silkoe's wife, um, like an Oleg, KMT. Like, I mean, it was so numerous. And you just thought, this is a very interesting situation. And mm. I'll be curious to see if they make it to the competition for a variety of reasons. Yeah. Yeah, I guess time is just going to tell this tale here, how it how it unfolds. I mean, he currently has a video on his YouTube of a guy and girl in bed together, and the woman has a knife with blood on it. I mean, I just, her silence, now that it's been in the press in Germany and elsewhere and things like that, I'm just surprised that no comment of any sort has been made. Well, she did comment that, like, we don't know anything. But yeah, then tell us, then please tell us, like the one way to combat this would to be forthcoming with any sort of information. Yes. Yeah. But it's funny is that if there's one thing that seems to annoy figure skaters enough to spur the movement about people coming forward, it's when they think someone has an unfair competitive advantage. TJ, a one-time junior grand prix medalist, not even final medalist. Right gets to skate with an Olympic champion, that was like repugnant to people where they were like, oh, so he's gonna be considered on that level? Hell no. And the reactions were visceral. That really took people off the skate. So, yeah. yeah. That's, um, mm. ugly, <laughs> ugly, yeah. I mean, no good is coming from You go this. watch that yeah. video, rewatch it. It's, um, no, I don't. I don't recall the discussion. I just recall the hug. So I'm gonna have to rewatch it. You're gonna need to rewatch the reverse. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're putting lips down. Granted, you know they have time to get them together, but he didn't seem like Bruno Masso to me. It didn't seem like she just plugged in Maxim, the American copy of Maxim Drankov, as Nina right. Marie was right. So. right. Fun. Okay. Okay. I'll rewatch it. Well, in other news, we did see Mariah Bell uh, debut her Lady Gaga program that we discussed a few weeks ago. And what did you think of her performance? She performed it at a camp, the point of perfection. Yeah, and what what is that? Is that, what does that mean? Listen, I think that there, I don't know exactly which camp this was, but there are many different seminars and clinics where people come in and they'll often, uh, you know, it's to inspire skaters and we learn a, a thing or okay. two. Okay, I didn't yeah. know if this was some sort of new champs camp no, no, kind of. Sure, it was at a different, it looked like an individual ring. Yeah. It was like okay. a performer, maybe they did an exhibition at the end of the week, yada yada, but this was her performance. So an opportunity for her to get out in front of an audience. And yeah, what, what did you think, Dave? I asked you first, Jonathan. I know you did. Well, I do, okay, so if I'm, if I- It was shaky, it was yeah, very so, left. So was here's the first. thing. If I'm looking at a program of, as Sandra will say, it's almost secondary, the material. It, it, it depends on the goods. What, yes, I didn't care for Mariah's material last season, 
but it wasn't her material ultimately that held her back. It was her lack of jumping consistency that did. And I, so as someone viewing it this time, maybe looking for that, but also knowing she's not ready to peak yet, I didn't see that. So it still leaves sort of a question mark for me. Okay, I think she looked fine for the, the point of where she is in the season. She wouldn't want to be necessarily doing uh, clean programs right now with everything, right? You have to pace, especially if she wants to make it to February. Although Mariah's in uh, a situation where she may go to Nevilleborn. She's in right. that conversation as a girl, and we're going to talk to Isadora Williams at the end of the show about Nevilleborn. She's in that conversation of someone that could go to Nevilleborn. So she may be ready, have to be ready earlier. So I think the fact that she got out and performed is a plus. And certainly if you go to Nevilleborn, because there aren't that many competitions over the last couple of years, that helps Mariah Bell's body of work argument. Because right. they don't have all of the same competitions in the criteria that necessarily, uh, you know, compare and contrast. So that would be something, even if it's not in the explicit, like this is supposed to be tier A and tier two and right. That certainly helps uh, the body of work that I'm looking at. In terms of what yeah. I'm thinking about who to send, I'm right. looking at that kind of performance. Uh, and she had a rough nationals and that would certainly get her back in the graces. What I noticed is that there, this article got, this you know, this program got so much buzz because there was an article and it was uh, choreographed by Denali, Cordero Zuckerman, who was on uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. And you know, the obviously Adam was involved in the creation of the program. And then there was supposed to be uh, an homage to voguing, to black trans women, to the LGBTQ community. I didn't see that much added. I would hope that they would add more. Usually a, co a program has a lot and gets stripped down. I almost hope that they would revisit and put stuff back in. I I saw it. And I was like, oh, it's like her Britney Spears program for different music. It didn't have enough over the top antics for me. Well, or specificity in, in certain things. Like even, you know, when um, Adam, when he did the Afternoon of a Fawn and he was doing those very specific hand gestures that made me go and look them up and you yeah. see like the homage and you see that connection and it's intellectual and it's thoughtful and all this sort of stuff. Um, Right now, it just seemed like a platform to be fun in sort of a generic, vague way. And that more specificity is is a real thing. Now, here's, here's something where it does kind of connect with me from an operatic standpoint. So in a way, even though Denali obviously comes from a skating background, has done a great deal of shows, they're trying to do something different. They're trying to bring someone who's made more of a name for themselves in the drag world than in the skating world in many ways. Which, which can bring a different vocabulary of programs in the Chicago area as a career. Yeah. Okay. There's, okay. This is his first maybe elite skater that he's done. So it's pretty okay. to the table. So but okay. he has done work in Chicago. But this sometimes what happens is they 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 um shy away from going all in. Or do you know what I mean? They're like, okay, I can't go nuts because she's actually going for the Olympics. I don't want to get in her way or something like that. When I wish they would lean into that outsiderness quality a little bit more. I wish it looked like something we had not seen before. All right. So riddle me this. Did you ever watch Save the <laughs> as a kid? Kind of. Jonathan, what? Like, what is your upbringing? Okay. Well, because I'm a different age than you. Like, so I'm older. Oh, so like. Out. Oh, like okay, so Saved by the Bell. Do you realize that like when they finished Saved by the Bell, there was a spinoff Saved by the Bell: The New Class? Yes, because I performed with the guy who was like the Zach of the New Class. Okay, it yeah. was terrible. It wasn't the same show at all. You kind of no. still watched it in the weekends, but like you hate watched it. You're like, why am I watching it? None of these characters have even distinct personalities. It's not charisma. Like they couldn't recreate the magic, but it lasted mm -hmm. too long on Saturday mornings. Okay. When I watched it, I was thinking, okay, the original Saved by the Bell would be Ashley and Adam, and this feels like the Diet Coke that. The one thing about Ashley and Adam is they committed to the performance 110%, and they believed it, especially when they went the camp route. Adam with the car, Ashley with the arrhythmics, with hip, hip, chin, chin. This felt half-baked to me. It felt assigned to her again. 
it feels like drag half baked. Okay. Right. Then right. just be, you know, a pretty girl doing Britney or Ariana Grande. Like there just wasn't enough in there. Yeah. In yeah. Camp. It was just like a fun, like this was a fun show number that you would just like slap together. It wasn't special enough. Adam would do that short program like his life depended on. It yeah. was, he was all in. And you knew that like he was going to deliver this program because he firmly believed this was the way to go. So again, even if it wasn't as elevated as other programs he had done, he sold it. He set out or he achieved what he set out to do. And I don't, I don't know that that happens with her because again, I feel like it's put on her. I feel like she is coasting at like a seven, five, seven, seven, five for components internationally, not nationally, internationally. And she needs to push through to that like eight, five, eight, seven, five mark. I don't think- and you she- could do that with a performance mark, with a big showy program. But again, if the minute you like take one shy foot backwards from it, you gotta commit. Yeah, to me, like this needs to add in attitude. That needs to add in more choreography, the armography. It just didn't have it for me. Yeah, the concept could be iconic. We still talk about Surya's short program. The crisis yeah, favor. Committed, right? Because she committed the ending thing where she lands on the on you know laying down all this that became iconic. And she, as a platform, and like the concept behind this is really intense. It could a hundred percent go somewhere. But maybe again, this is always a hard time in the season for me because it's so do you know what I mean? You've got to let people both, like, I- approximate. So the difference, okay, Piper and Paul have been successful in very different genres. Mariah Bell picks a very sweet kind of music and she's a sweet skater, but like she's most effective when she has like a sweeping piece of music like East of Eden, Hallelujah, you know, something like that that kind of like carries her and carries the program when she skates cleanly and then then she does a spiral and everyone is feeling and then you're like well was it the program was it her was it the combination of this but it definitely elevates her and it seems maybe more even more artistic than maybe she even is but it's the right choice yeah i think in that sense the uh the both sides now will be effective i think it will do the job that it needs to do should but i mean a taylor swift folklore number for her would have been effective Something like going going that route, like you're saying, the 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 long program for the free skate the music. She needs something, right? Like yeah, he yeah. Should, or Taylor Swift, the, then then trans voguing. Yeah, I don't know that she's ever even gone to the Abbey with Adam. Maybe she has. Maybe she hasn't. Maybe she went home before the drag queens came on. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know pieces. In the village. Or maybe she appreciates them, loves them, supports them, but do- that doesn't necessarily mean she should emulate or try I to. How many episodes of the show she's seen? Okay. <laughs> she has homework. Yeah. How many episodes of Pose has she watched? I mean, you got to get the talking points, you got to get the feeling, the vibe, you got to own it, you got to sell it. If you're doing this, you need to do it 110%. Yeah. Yeah. There's time between now and number one. You need to make this the program that everyone is looking forward to because she already put it out there to get the press. And you could go viral this kind of message and this kind of approach if it's done correctly. The concept has the potential to go viral. Or it has the potential to feel put on. Like in the way of Jason doing Hamilton that didn't quite sing in the right way. Also a white person doing Hamilton, like, but again, I, under, I understood the logic there because they were trying to ride a wave. Yeah. It just wasn't the right wave for him to ride, in my opinion. Yeah. Or the right there song. Or, yeah. I don't, just, Whereas you give that kid Cinder Man and you're like, ah, it's a mind blowing success. For the Peggy Fleming tro- trophy, he's doing an extended version. Rumor has it. Director's cut, yeah. <laughs> Director's cut of Sinner Man. And that wow. way it's easier for him to train the short program after he does a longer version because that program is so physically demanding. I mean, there's not one second of it that isn't outrageously athletic. It's incredible. Absolutely, it should be. Uh, yeah, yeah. The whole also, thing. last week we forgot to bring up that Paul Poirier also came out in the same day that Caitlin Weaver and Jason Brown came out. Um, what was, 
See, I didn't understand because I thought we kind of knew that. Was this like a public announcement of sort? Or I just thought maybe it was, it was an article a about him. public announcement. I don't know that, okay. he, you know, like, because of his Instagram and things, I don't know that he was necessarily in, but he had never given an interview about it before. Okay. But that becomes like a weird situation. Like Jeremy Abbott has posted things about um, being gay on Instagram, but he's never had like an ICE Network article about it. Yeah. I under, yeah, understood. Same. Like, I was just like, I just always was kind of gay in my career. I never had like a moment where I announced that I was. Yeah. Right. It's a weird thing because Instagram kind of breaks those lines. And you're like, is it what? the interesting thing about Jason? And we kind of, I saw it and I didn't acknowledge it. He, U.S. Figure Skating put something out to honor its LGBTQ athletes. And they had like a montage of different athletes and Jason's photo was included before he actually made the statement. That was interesting. Oh, okay. Well, they, I wonder he, if he gives them the heads up. I'm sure he gave them the heads up. Yeah. And it was just like someone posted something too early before that came. So. Yeah. Whoops. Also, it wasn't like. But also like, not to just be lecherous in the moment, but like. How good did Paul look in that spread? I was like, Paul looks Dear great. Lord, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Well, that thing is that there are guys in Toronto that have been in love with him forever. But, uh, you know, Fair enough, great. yeah. I, I mean, get it. Out in his personal life for a long time. So it yeah. was. Yeah, stunning. But stunning. we did, and good for him. He gave a whole interview. With how, I wonder if they really coordinated ahead of time. There was a cute photo of the three of them on FaceTime with each other. That's very, very nice. So, yeah, all good, all good. Right, so, all right, we have heard some news on the front. So my friend, Michael Solonowski, is competing at... Um, One-time guest. Yes, he's competing at Adult National. He's going for a six triple program. Oh my, yeah, I've seen him do like triple luxes and stuff on, yeah, so he, Instagram. He a triple lux at Adult National. But he even tries triple loop, triple loop, which you would attempting to put in the program, but I was, I've seen him practice and he skates on the same ice with Gracie Gold and can let us know that she's looking really, really good right now. Gracie is like really busting out and uh, is in Switzerland right now working with Lumbiel to be in the competitive atmosphere. So her programs were choreographed by Jeremy Abbott um, and she, uh, bringing back a program from uh, 2017, the Daphne and Chloe. Uh, Which was a stunning program. We, we, yeah, that was the program that like... I know, I know. Where like the wheels are falling off the bus. And then it all... Uh, maybe it's a redemption all. moment. Maybe it's yeah. a redemption moment to revisit something and say, hey, because again, I would think like, well, maybe she should bring like Firebird. And then you're like, well, maybe she shouldn't if that like was the program she did at Worlds when like, it was like the high hopes that it didn't happen. Maybe right. that's more trivial. And maybe this program, she's like- And the Ravel, that thing, that program, that everything was so exquisite about it. Of course, there was such a disconnect with her as a competitor that season, but the material was sensational, I thought, for her. Well, anyway, I, it's, apparently she looks really good. She, so she, what do you mean? So Jeremy helped her sort of recraft it? I would imagine, right? But okay. he definitely choreographed the short program. Okay, got it, got it. Which he did the last season as well, so. Right. And Jeremy is actually in Italy right now with Massimo and Alyssa Liu because they have a hard time still with COVID and getting ice times at certain rinks. And that's why they were in Colorado for a while. And Isn't that funny? My festival in Italy was canceled because the government was so slow to give out regulations. But I'm glad that they were able to figure something out with the rinks over there. Well, I'm sure Massimo has connections having grown up in Italy. One would hope. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw yeah. that they were doing a clinic together. So I think they went over there for a couple of weeks to get things done. So it's just interesting kind of like to watch the skaters. It's like we really have about like five or six girls who are very competitive. Um, people in Texas uh, were letting us know that Amber Glenn is going for the triple axle in the short program and the free skate this season. So that. You know what? you got to throw everything in the kitchen sink for her. Do you know what I mean? Go Perfect. all out. Go all out. She's jumping well. So you wonder, like Neville Horn, maybe Mariah Bell isn't the shoe up. We've heard that Alyssa Liu has a hip injury. Maybe it would be a chance. I think there's an argument to put out Amber Glenn. 
Silver medalist. Silver medalist, didn't get to go to Worlds. This would be a nice moment, a big proving opportunity for her. Right. Because that's the other thing is that if, okay, so let's say that the US passed her over for Worlds. If you pass her over again for Neville, and we've never seen her at a World Championships, then you get to nationals and people go, well, she has no experience. Well, she had no experience because she finished second. She wouldn't give her any. Yes, exactly. That was my point with Roman for a while with the Canadian Federation. It's like, I know, let him work this out, you know. I think she could finish in the top six at Neville Horn and confirm her spot, so. And for all we know, that was part of the appeasement when they told her that they weren't going to put her on the world team. I don't think there are any guarantees with yeah. take it that far in advance. I would well, because I remember even being surprised they wouldn't have thrown her, like sometimes they would throw Max Air on like the world team trophy as a, you know, a consolation prize or something. But I guess if you're Amber, maybe it behooves you like, okay, I'm not in it for worlds. I'd rather get cracking on next season instead of like still kind of training these programs. The world team trophy is such a money making opportunity. And if they're denying for worlds in a year when there's no competition, and then they're using body of work for the Olympics. I want to go to the World Team Trophy. That becomes exponentially more important right. in an Olympic year. But isn't it interesting? Like, let's say Gracie Gold could be very competitive. Let's, let's say best case scenario, right? Okay. Let's say Amber trains hard over the summer. Okay. Consistent and delivering. And Mariah Bell seems on track, right, to... Seems like pressure has been lifted. She fought for that double axle and landed it. And you have like Alyssa Liu, who's, you know, getting healthier, adjusting, you know, working on her skating. Then you have Karen, who's never really had the consistent triple triple. And you have Brady, whose jumps weren't fully rotated. But Karen and Brady got us the spots. But what if the others look better? I think it's very possible that at least one or two, one or both could be supplanted at Nationals. I think the, the season Karen, has a lot to tell. Karen has the components, right? And you know, again, yeah, and that's what I was saying, like the international judging panel will always like her more than the rest. Or not maybe more than the rest, will always like her. Yeah, I, I, well, I mean, more than that. Brady. International judges wouldn't give Gracie Gold the marks if Gracie Gold showed up like Gracie Gold at her best moment. But wouldn't Gracie, in order to get those marks, have to do that all season? She would she'd have, have to be at several, time. she'd have to, yeah. Get Skate America. Yeah. And if she's in the pool, even if she only got Skate America and it's a real international, do you see that triple X, triple toe? And Gracie, like, yeah. The moment, come on. Okay. Yeah. And she can do double axe and triple toe. Like, yes. You know, she's going to get the marks. Yeah. She has that quality to her skating when she is at her best. So, right. I, if she, that's if, a big ask. It's a big ask. And I, again, I hope, I hope well, all the reports I'm continue just, to be that. I tell you that I love as much as sectionals. A comeback story? Oh, I'm like Liberty Bell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She yeah. trains at the rink where Liberty is going to be. And I chatted with Isadora that we're going to put at the end of the show. She's going to compete at Liberty this summer or the Philadelphia Championship that used to be known as Liberty. And it's at the rink in Aston, Pennsylvania, where Gracie trains. Kehlani Crane from Australia is going to go. Uh, maybe Emmy from Finland may compete there. Isadora. Gracie, that's a competition I want to watch. Okay. No kidding. It's basically Nebelhorn. Yeah. Right? Like, I want to watch that and see. Yeah. And I'm sure that US figure skating will be watching that. And then Cranberry this year is interesting because Cranberry in Boston is going to have enough international people to actually be an ISD event to get points. So more people are going to go there. So we should go to Boston in August. See you but, then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because Alexa and Brandon are going to compete there. Okay. Other players are going to compete there, depending on the situation in Canada. Maybe they'd be able to enter it, but it's unclear with the border. But it could be very interesting that a lot of those skaters are also going to be going to that event. So that and event again, it's, it's how I was experiencing with live music. We miss it. We yeah. will want to go to a live event again. 
like people will come out for these. Yeah. Yes, I will stay on like Chris Shippen's couch and like go to watch your event. <laughs> yes, Queen. Okay. Like yeah. <laughs> let's do it. Okay. Okay. Amazing. I want to skate. I want to go to the skating club of Boston and go to the Tenley Albright Performance Center. And maybe get a free checkup. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jonathan. Like, I yeah. Say, come on. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, these ladies, I think it's going to be very interesting. And Lindsay Thorngren is going to, you know, it's, these competitions really start early because Skate Milwaukee, which is coming up uh, first weekend in July, is going to be where the Junior Grand Prix is content, like where they're going. Yeah. Through. And that's even competitive because a bunch of the seniors, like, who so the big seniors at nationals, but Lindsay Thorngren last year competed at the senior nationals, Isabeau, and like a bunch of the up and coming skaters will be competing there to get spots for the junior grand prix. So that could be an exciting event. Lindsay Thorngren has who's already been delivering her A game. Yeah. <clears throat> sort of she has a program where she's trying a triple axel, which is not clean yet, but they're working on it. And she puts it in the run through. She did a run through the other day with the attempt of the triple axel and three triple triples after it. All right. <laughs> right. Like, She's in it to win it. <laughs> okay. I think they are in it to win it versus okay. Milwaukee. Like that. <clears throat> okay. Is. She's Empty. prepared for Wisconsin. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, and she should be. I mean, good for her. I mean, I think for those skaters, you have to have that kind of content because if you're going to be competing against the Russians. I mean, less, I mean, even, even a triple axel at three triple triples, like that's still not up to par with what they're doing technically, but it could Although, still be. This is going to be the next generation of a Terry Russian. And Terry's Russian. Yeah. So Akatieva is great. The other ones are still coming up. Jelena, right. I think if she were with a Terry, would be more consistent with her technical content, but hasn't been as consistent as of late. Yeah. Will she be on the Junior Grand Prix? Will she not? But Akatieva, I think, has a great shot. But towards the end, I love her. I love her. But we haven't seen the big elements from her yet. Well, we were seeing triple axel, triple toes last season, weren't we? Yeah. Akatieva? Akatieva, oh, yes. The toes yeah. Are right, right. Or the ultra C jumps, as they call them. That doesn't mean that they're not there. That doesn't mean that she hasn't been practicing them. But no. I am curious what will happen. And then you have Japan that's trying to really push the next generation of ladies. And we did see that one of their skaters had a quad. So this is going to be a very interesting junior Grand Prix to kind of see what is happening in terms of the mix. So yeah, it's exciting stuff. It is very exciting. Um, now we did see uh, Alina Zagitova doing some drone action. It looked like they have a new on ice perspectives happening where she was doing a performance. It was and I love when they interviewed her. They're like, how was it? She was like, honestly, it was really like, she just like wanted to swat it away or thought it would get in her way, but it took her a while to get used to that drone thing. I mean, I even remember, was it in Japan? When they would have that like aerial camera on the cables and it would try to give us those aerial views of the spin, but it would make us all nauseous and stuff like that. I appreciate that they're trying, but the footage I saw from it didn't seem that. I never liked the aerial shot, but it yeah. was not for everyone. I didn't, I didn't find it impressive. It was, you know, but. She landed a triple lots, I think, in the coverage in the article I was watching. You know, they had clips yeah, embedded yeah. and it was pretty impressive. In a way, it seems like she has a lot going on there. And we have seen Medvedeva practicing pairs for this Anna Karenina show. Now, of course, her fans want her to compete pairs now with, um, with Enbert. Even though Ted thinks she's much more of a nice dancer at heart. I think she has pair girl energy. I just wonder how her back would hold up to do with throws and yeah. flips and all of that. But I mean, if she could compete in pairs, i watch it. I don't care. Yeah, she, of course you would. Yeah. I don't care if she's in 20th place, Jonathan. I'm there. All right. Doesn't matter. Yeah, care. exactly. She has energy, like get her healthy, send her to the German doctor, get that back healed. Let's go. Okay. You could do a lot for the discipline. You know what I mean? I always Let's think do like it. if she's doing this show, I know that like, they haven't officially retired. If you're for the Olympic, if it's an Olympic season and you're preparing for a show where you're doing pairs and not working on your quad soccer. You are 
No. You have come in loud and clear. Yeah. 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 So maybe this is the start of something new for her. And she did a star position. And you know what? He could hold her up. He was not having any TJ Nyman issues. All right. That was a strong star position. Not the most. And he was one. He came out looking the best, I thought, in that documentary we watched. He was so delightful and so like non skatery in a positive way. And like, why is an alien skater there? <laughs> right? No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. But I think there are a million people which like, and why is an alien skater with that person or did that person or your neighbor down the street or yeah. any, anyone? Yeah, go to adult nationals and find someone. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They could do triple lutzes there. Listen, Robin Solkoe, uh took my friend Rosalia through her uh, adult silver test. He can still do all the things, okay? Just saying. You know, he's very mild-mannered and kind, is what I'll He'd say. He'd have to be. He'd have to be, yeah. I... <laughs> And he's like staying in Rosalia's house and like, right, you should get him, give him a couple glasses of wine. Maybe some- Get jerk. the stories flowing. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah. Give come us on. what we're here for. Yeah. Do you want to have a dinner party? Like, come on, come on. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Just uh, casually show up in a pink jumpsuit and see if it triggers him in any way. <laughs> oh, we absolutely could. Um, we saw Donovan Carrillo is going to work with is working with Benoit. He is at that camp. Benoit is working. Did work with Aliona and TJ. And it seemed like they were skating to James Blake. The lyrics that go, "We're alone now." Anyway, anyway, I heard it. There's a video. It happened. Okay, it yeah. happened. You saw it. I saw it. I yeah. Aliona says we can have a lot of. Nick. A yeah, lot of yeah. people are going to run with that. Yeah, it's true. Man, I... <laughs> Isn't it interesting they haven't made an announcement after? Anything? Funny that. Funny. How about those cubs? How are they doing? How about the cubs? <laughs> Amazing. How about those dolphins? <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. And now, Jonathan, you need to get into the Olympic trials for gymnastics because it is coming this week and you know people love selecting a team. Okay? Yeah. yeah. I'm so happy cool. to watch. We have Jordan Childs with the Tanya Connection. And remember that I joked with you in a couple of weeks ago that at the Nationals, I was saying that you should take a drink if NBC references the father. Oh, right, right. right. We filmed it. Right. They opened the coverage yeah. with Andrea talking about Sumi's paralyzed father and the fact that he can now kick his leg. Yeah. They are shameless. They are yeah. shameless, Jonathan. Now I'm gonna have to be drinking out of a vase. <laughs> watch those Olympic trials. And they said, like everyone in the comments who like clearly know the coverage as well as you, they're like, Dave, you're gonna kill him. <laughs> if he actually drinks it, all the things you said, he's, he's, it's not gonna end well, yeah. <laughs> Would you review that? Okay. Okay, with my Dave chart, yeah. Simone, greatest of all time. Caroline's father. Sumi's father. Jordan Child's doing well because she trains with Simone. Oh, and I think you also said with Simone when she's just being, like she's just like randomly picking her nose in the corner and you're like, coverage, yeah. Simone's coach actually asked NBC to show other gymnasts, which of course earned her like such positive press. I mean, she's gonna have two athletes on the Olympic team and now the love. Always. Exactly, because you know what, that additional second or two for Simone wasn't doing anything more for her, yeah. I actually find that it annoys me and I start to put it on Simone and it's not her fault that NBC- Of course be. not, exactly. But exactly. even her just like being, you start to get almost a negative feeling at Simone when you're like, okay, this is too much. Right, right. Or, and I talked to someone else, Simone will be stepping out of bounds and like making mistakes that maybe don't matter in this meet, but maybe could matter in like the Olympic event finals if other people yeah. do. 
Right. She makes enough mistakes, right? And like, they're not she ready. still has to deliver her job. She is there yeah, to do a and job. Yeah. Not, they're not reflecting that in the remarks that they're saying. They're right. calling her perfect. The judges are scoring her perfectly as she's flying out of bounds and taking steps on floor. Like, it's not just the out of bounds, it's also the step that you deduct. Right. So, right. Right. And she's and great. again, not it's, Simone's fault. Exactly. Not Simone's fault. And no right. one is saying that she's not great. Right. But it becomes so over the top that we're like, yeah. all right, how much more of this do you have to deal with? You almost like want to like her to retire just because it's like, this is a lot. This is, a, yeah. or like, maybe you don't want her to retire. Maybe you want NBC to just take a joke though. It's as though they're like, okay, she's going to go viral. So let's build this up and let's build up all of our commentary to create a viral moment. Every time, let's just like allow it. Yeah. But it's, it becomes gross. It, NBC didn't know Jason's Riverdance program was coming. Right, and it happened organically. It happened organically and it was so magical as a result of it. Yeah. yeah. If you try too hard to like make these moments for us, it has that sort of like America's Got Talent canned vibe to it, you know? And it's like, let us, let us organically find this moment. Let us find it. Yes, let us find it. Uh, yeah, ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> their, their commentary has become just a farce. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't, it's still a sport. There are still other great athletes living and breathing who are potentially in the conversation. And it's a craft. Again, like it doesn't it, grow the sport in this moment, not the hype about one person. Well, the problem with that is that Simone is planning on taking at least one year off not to, if not, maybe. And she's talked about coming back for 2024, no guarantee, right? What are you gonna do when she's no longer competing other than interview her every year at National? Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, her eating like a Subway sandwich, being like, eat fresh and go for the gold. <laughs> like, right? yeah. I don't understand like what they think. Right, right. Because you're, your tab, like you can't put all of your eggs in a basket that has a clear expiration date in front of it. Right. And like, she talked about wanting to be done. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, yeah, exactly. That it's all about the Olympics and vibe and they don't care, but it's become otherwise- Even for the short term, yeah. It's like when we went so Sasha Cohen and Michelle Kwan and they, they still showed the other competitors. They were not just like showing Michelle Kwan stretching. Or getting right. Like, right, yeah. Instead of watching Jenny's program or something like that, yeah. But when Sasha and Michelle retired in the same year, there was a huge vacuum feeling at right. watching it as a viewer the next year. Right. It's in when they lost me for a period. That was yes. that period where I disappeared from the sport. Because I don't think that maybe, and maybe mm -hmm. you know, like a fandom, Mao and Yuna coming up, it wasn't. Junior Worlds wasn't what it is now, right? Like Correct, was, I agree. They, they helped start Junior Worlds becoming the real predictor and the real stepping stone. And Junior Worlds was great, but it wasn't, let's go from Junior World Champion to Senior World Champion. Like it, it was more of a gradual progression. They they shifted that to where it kept right. going and becoming yeah. more and more impressive. So. Yeah, I, I don't know that that's. And yes, Michelle Kwan like went from Junior World to being an Olympic alternate, but it was a little like different. Like Mao went from being a Junior World champion, and Silver, you know, to being a Grand Prix final champion, to then being in the World Stage. It's a little different. And you know, went from, right. you know winning Junior Worlds to winning the short program at Senior Worlds. Like it's, it, it became very different. So. Absolutely. I'm bracing myself for the comments of people that are going to want to like negate us. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, the heat of a go from Junior World Champion to Olympic Champion. That's coming at you. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's coming. You know, like people. Yeah. Are, like, yeah. How it was perceived by the fandom at the time. Was but also the availability of that coverage, too. I mean, look at how closely we're watching Junior Grand Prix competitions now. Yeah, yeah, Help that become a reality. Because, yeah. Right, yeah. Really it's it is what it is it's uh, yeah so i'm uh i digress but yes many <laughs> things happening in the coming weeks so hold an edge and look sexy everyone Dave. well john 
Yeah. This is my new favorite thing we do in June, <laughs> is that we film a this and that, we stop filming a this and that, only to find out that someone else has come out of the closet. It's exciting because now I wonder who's coming out next week. <laughs> Diana Ross, where are you? Anyway, <laughs> Kevin Amos has now come out of the closet in a French documentary. Thank goodness I checked my phone. People are always like, why do you have your phone there? This stuff breaks constantly, okay? And literally, then, literally every time we film. <laughs> Kevin Amos has just done his coming out on French TV. He took part in a documentary called speak French, so I'm not gonna. Je suis gay. <laughs> it's called We Need to Talk. I don't know, I didn't speak French. So don't worry about it, don't worry about it. You're doing Russian French, instead. Where six French athletes talk about their life and experiences as LGBT athletes. So. Well, good for him. Yes, very cool. And we didn't hear, like, did, has anyone read Guillaume's book? Can anyone let us know? Is it just about him coming out? Is it about his whole life? Like what happens in the Guillaume book? I see pictures of people reading the Guillaume book, but like, is it all about his life as an athlete? Do we learn all about the programs? Like what do we learn yes. about Guillaume in the book? Exactly. Did he know about Kevin? <laughs> it was a surprise. <laughs> um, <laughs> Cal Super Ace, okay. <laughs> program when he died is here anyway uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> i knew those dance moves were too cool no i'm just kidding that's a joke that's a joke we're so much better than we're about anyway <laughs> all right we'll get into the sexy yeah he was all right so last week i talked about qualifications for Neville Horn. And Isadora took issue to some of my comments. So I have invited her on, uh, Isadora Williams of Brazil, of the Neville Horn Queens, to talk about um, three per countries. And I said that I didn't know things and that I was willing to be educated. So I'm interested in your experience living in uh, the US and representing Brazil and mm -hmm. have at it. Okay, well, I think, um... My story is pretty simple. My mother is from Brazil and my father is American. And they had me and my sister here in the US. And because my it's the same way in the US, if you were born here and your parent is a native to the country, then you get you can be naturalized if you apply. And my mom applied when me and my sister were infants. Sorry, I apologize, I'm on my phone. Um and Later on, when I started getting better in figure skating, we decided to approach the Brazilian Figure Skating Federation, and they sent me to my first Junior Worlds in 2010. And the rest is history. Like, I yeah. just kept skating for Brazil for the next 10 years. So now, did you know growing up that you would likely represent Brazil? Like, how did that come about? My mom planted the idea in my head. So once I started skating, like, I was still itty bitty. My mom was like, you should be the, like, you should represent Brazil at the Olympics. Like, let's make that the goal. And we'd been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. And we, once I started to get like my first triple jumps and my double axle, we decided to represent Brazil. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it was, it was a natural process and it wasn't something we did later on. It was, my sister is also a citizen of Brazil and she's not even an athlete. So that was, that was never my mom's plan in the beginning. So now, what do you think the biggest challenges are representing a smaller country skating wise? You know, obviously Brazil's a big country, but in terms of skating, it's a smaller federation. Right. Mm -hmm. I think I think the biggest issue is just, you know, skating is not a totally objective sport. It is a subjective sport. And I think that smaller feds, it's able to, you're able to be put down a little bit as far as scoring goes and nobody will say anything about it. And you falling off the face of the earth isn't a big deal. And it's, you have to fight your way, I think, to prove yourself a little bit more and to not be seen as not, I'm not going to say a joke, but to be taken a little bit more seriously. It does, I guess, you know, the flag in skating doesn't have necessarily the same prestige as it, you know, as like, okay. People associate Brazil with soccer and yeah. And for a lot of other countries, it's the same way, like Mexico, also soccer, Philippines, everything. They don't think of figure skating when they think of those countries. So now for you trying to make your Olympics, you know, what is the funding situation like? I know that you were off the ice for a while, like everyone was off during quarantine, you got back. 
like is funding an issue for these kind for when you represent another country how does that work oh absolutely yeah i'm blessed to have the amount of funding that i do i can get my ice time and my coaching fees covered but that's the extent of it like rent is on me food expenses are on me transportation is on me um and for a lot of people they get nothing they basically just get the name of the country and then the rest of the expenses the travel everything is on them it's difficult and it's difficult i know that some bigger federations also they struggle with funding too um you get covered if you go to an event or is that dicey like yes to some extent um some of them it's it's never it's not even like a one-size-fits-all situation like sometimes my coach isn't covered sometimes only i'm covered sometimes you know if you're going to like the world championships the isu covers your hotel it's 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 a little bit you know it's every case is different every competition is different in my case so in your case, you are competing in this new Neville Horn system where now, where there were gonna, usually there are so many skaters, so many slots open, and that's how you've gotten to the Olympics before. Now, they, there's this thing about confirming spots and people don't really understand exactly what is going on. I know you understand some of it that like, let's say in the US, they have, they have to go to Neville Horn, they have to have a skater finish in the top six, right? To confirm that spot. Yeah, six of the countries that haven't already qualified from what I understand. So like, for example, I, Germany usually sends one person just because it's the host country of that of Ober of Neville Horn Trophy. And um, but Germany already got a spot at world. So they'll just take the next six after that. Um, but yeah, so I, I know USA is going to confirm their third spot. Um, like I said, unless some natural disaster happens, like the airline loses the skater skates, knock on wood. I don't want it, that to happen to anybody. Um, but yeah, and then it's basically the next five after that, and it's going to be very, very competitive. So now you actually, some of your good friends, I know Kaylani and Emmy, they represent other countries, and they, I know Kaylani has trained uh, with Tiffany Chin in LA and gone back and forth, you know, between Australia. So will you all be competing against each other before Neville Horn? Like, do you have a chance to stack up against your competitors? Yeah, I think we're all going to be competing against each other this summer, and... Okay. But the great thing about those two is that we all cheer each other on regardless. And even though Emmy is in a different situation because Finland already snagged a spot at World, so it's going to be more of a battle within her own country. But yeah, me and Kai are going to be competing against each other, but we did it in the past and we were just praying. It doesn't matter who gets what spot, but we were praying that we both go. Yeah. So, but even in the case that I make it and she doesn't or she makes it and I don't, I know we're all going to support each other regardless so at what point do things start getting really stressful and serious was you have to peak at the end of september at a certain level to qualify for an event in february so you kind of have to peak twice right so yeah. when, <laughs> yeah. when does your hair start like pulling out at the rink and when does kristen start being in fabulous moods like when does this all start going down well it's already happening we're in the beginning of this emotional it's like almost this existential stress is almost nostalgic at this point because I've been through this twice and I like that fear in the pit of your stomach it's like oh I missed this feeling <laughs> and um yeah it starts now and like I am getting like after my competition my first competition in Boston it was not fabulous based on those results I would have never qualified for the Olympics um but it was a start I got back into skating even a little bit later than everybody else I started back skating again in February and it was my first competition in a while. And I just, based on the results of that, I'm like, wow, it's time to get really serious. I can't get away with, you know, being tired and not showing up. Like I'm not drinking, I'm not going out anymore. Like it's gonna be, I'm gonna be a monk for the rest of the summer. And are you feeling stressed? Are you feeling excited? Like what is the, both, okay. Both, yeah. And is Igor, how is Igor handling this? Like, is he? He's pretty cool and collected. And every time I, you know, I ask him, like, oh, do you think I can make it? Do you think I can make it? And he's just like, I don't know, just train. Just go into the ring tomorrow, train. <laughs> just show up. Okay. Thank um, you, Igor. That was a real, like, ins inspirational moment and a good, uh, yeah. The less talking, the better in that case. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, as you know, I'm sure. He, yes, although today he was filming 
so he was more talkative than usual. Oh, okay. So yeah. All right. So now you are going to compete at Liberty and the Cranberry Open. You told me before you've been Neville Horn. So I guess for you, technically, are you adding anything to your programs? You know, what is your goal as far as the season goes? We are going to try, I'm going to try to do a triple triple this season. Um, and I'm sorry. Yeah. Did you, you my have mom, a party to go to. Sure. So a, you have a party to go to. So yes. <laughs> Mama, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone's questioning my Brazilianness, <laughs> this is my lovely mother. Hi. Big viewer. Hi. We are wishing Isadora well for you know Neville Horn. So we're interviewing her about it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm just getting ready for my husband 66. Oh, well, we will let you go. So oh. yes. I saw yes. That <laughs> well, thank you so much, Isadora. Go to your party. We will see you later. Okay. No, I'm so scared. We're they're still getting ready, but sorry. Uh, yeah. So okay. Basically, I think backtracking elements. I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be trying Let's Toe at. Okay. Neville. All right. Will you put it out in Philadelphia first? When is it yeah. going down? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try it there first, and yeah, because you can't get away with a triple double anymore in the short program. It's just uh, times have evolved. Okay. Well, I saw you working on it with Roman, so you're moving up in the world. So, you know. We're getting there. All right. Well, do you have anything else, like any bones you want to pick? We can go. You can. Yes, I just, I just want to see if I can just maybe hear your perspective and just compare okay. it with mine. Okay, so I wasn't talking about you for the whole segment. I was saying that I was, and I shouldn't, I should have sparse things more, but my thing is that I think that there are some countries historically that abuse the system more than others. Sure. And I didn't disagree with all of your point in that video. It wasn't like. But I didn't mean you all of the things I was speaking like generally. Like when I said, do people know the language? I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about like in general, like when you see that there's like someone who's like representing Israel and then they're representing Lithuania and then they're representing another country. That was kind of my. Mm -hmm questioning in terms of, I think, cause like, even though I understand in the, I understand that it was very hard to get a partner on a high level when you're a nice dancer and like things, right. happen, things how this happened. But then you see like certain skaters over the years have gone to like one Olympics for this country, the next Olympics for this country. And I think that that, it's not that it's like, I don't necessarily think that they shouldn't do it. Cause I think it's within the rules, but I think it just calls things into question when you're like, okay. And I understand that. And, and I, okay, just about like what I got upset about, it was just, I didn't understand the context of what you were saying it through. And I, I, you were saying, am I really Brazilian? Do I speak I the language? Say, were you really Brazilian? No, but you said, you said, and not. I said, how does it help the Federation? Sure. And I don't know how it helps the Federation. That's true. Like, and I. You were talking about yourself. You were like, am I, am I really, I think I know you were just using the country as an example. You weren't necessarily talking about me. I know that now, but when I first heard it, it was like, do I know the language? Do I really, I mean, am I really Brazilian? I really tell you though. That part was not, a, so I was saying that if like I, someone, do they know the language? Yeah. It was, you were referencing a rent, like the first country yeah. that popped in your head. I get that now, but. Um, but I just think, and the, I also got upset because, you know, I know you personally, like I see you at the rink and stuff. And it was just like, if you wanted to know if, how it helps the country. And I just, I wish you would have asked me in person and because it has, um, fair. yeah. And I think like just participating at the Olympics, it's like that, that when I first participated in Sochi, that was like the first time they ever broadcasted it nationally live in mm -hmm. Brazil. And since then, a rink has been built and a learn to skate program has been developed and people are actually skating based on seeing someone represent the country at the Olympics, you know? It, so I walk it, that back. I will, I will walk my comment back and I think that that, okay. But I do, but I do understand the frustration of some people. Like, I think that, but I don't think there's any, I mean, this is my it's opinion. All within the rules and I think that people, you know, things happen. Right. But I do think I do agree with you in the sense that um, if you do choose to represent a country, it shouldn't just be a vessel for you to go to the Olympics. You should make an effort to relate to the population, learn the culture. If they do speak another language, try to learn the language. 
Mm -hmm. to the best of your ability. Um, And like, for example, Stevchenko, like she, in the beginning when she was skating with Robin, you know, she she learned German. She lived in Germany. She be, she was immersed in the culture in Oberstdorf, and and, and it's she like did them for a long time. You know, she did it for a long time, and whether she's German or not, yeah, I mean, she's from Ukraine, but it's like my mom. My mom has lived now in the U.S. more than she has in Brazil, and she considers herself Brazilian American, even though she was born in Brazil. And it's just it's wishy washy. But I do agree with you. I think there's some people who may abuse the system, but I just the rules. I don't. You have to attack the system, not the person themselves, because if the dream is the Olympics, people are going to do everything I'm they trying can. Trying to attack the system, and I apologize if it was an attack of you. I was trying to speak generally, and I apologize for how it came across. Okay, that's okay, and I'm sorry I got upset. It's okay. We're I got a upset. <laughs> <laughs> but I could get egg on my face. It is okay. So we're, you know, we're fine. But yeah, I just, I just think that I think it, I think it's just case by case and you know there's stories like donovan who he was born and raised in mexico started skating on the public session and somehow through hard work and surrounding himself with good people he defied all the odds and he became a world-class figure skater like he's doing quads and triple axles but that's just you know unfortunately that's just not the case for a lot of countries and i think that having someone who may not be born in that country might just introduce Like I'm hoping that after I'm done, people born and raised in Brazil and will start to come out of the country, out of their their new rink and their new program. And I'm just hoping that's the case for other countries too. But yeah, I think I think it's a little bit disheartening seeing people hop a lot, but at the same time, it's just like they're still playing within the rules. Mm -hmm. It's true. Well, I thank you for coming on and talking it out, and we will be rooting you on this summer. Thank you very much, Dave.